everyone. This is the fourth episode of TNN Tiger's New Network. Today the <coughs> monsters are bringing you many great stories. Today we will learn about <coughs> how to get um out of the crab trap, being safe in <coughs> school, typing practice, behaving in a library, and a new student. <coughs> in our first story, we are going to learn about the crab of the grab and go table. Hi, Sunnyside Tigers. My name is Ava. I'm Julia. And my name is Alice. Do you keep seeing people throw away their food? Of course, especially if they don't like the food. Did you know that 72 billion pounds of food is thrown away each year? Wow. wow. There must be a solution. Well, guess what? There is. We, we came, came up with a solution for you. The solution is the grab and go table. What is the grab and go table, you might ask? The grab and go table is a system in which food you do not want to eat is ensured not to be wasted. Well, what you can put on the table is ice cream, milk, snapple, water, the main meal, and partially eaten food. Things you can put on the table are apples in a bag, any variety of chips, a banana in the peel, carrots in a bag, and cookies in a bag. And now, a picture, a picture of, of the grab and go table. Poster. The grab and go poster explains what you can and can't put on the table in case you forget. We hope you use the grab and go table often. Thanks for th that story, Alice, Julia, and Eva. I am happy that we will be able to use the food that would be thrown in the garbage. <coughs> now let's hear some strategies about <coughs> how we can get out of the crab trap from Jordan, Maya, and Fiorella. This year we learned all about the Look for the Good campaign. The Look for the Good project had many different parts to it. We learned about kindness and generosity. The Look for the Good project is something you should always have with you. Some of the parts in the Look for the Good project were also about the things that we had, like crabby actions. When you are frustrated, you get a crabby voice in your head and you can't control it. That's called the crab trap. One way to stay out of it is to take a deep breath or write down, or even just write down how you feel. Another way to get rid of the crab trap is to fill someone's bucket. When you fill someone's bucket, it, it means to make someone happy. You can, fill, you can fill someone's bucket just by picking up their papers when they drop them. The crab trap is something you don't want to you don't want to be stuck in. It's something you want to stay out of. The crab trap is is a thing you can get out of easily. Sometimes all you have to do is count to 10. Maybe you could even try sketching. When you're stuck in a when you're stuck in the crab trap, sometimes all you have to do is squeeze a stress ball. Some other ways to make sure you stay out of the crab trap is to use positive affirmations. Positive affirmations are when you look in the mirror and say something, something like, I'm going to rock my day, or I'm going to have a great day. There are many people that represent our school in many different ways. Right now, take a moment and write down how you would solve the problem. And if your teacher wants, you could, you could write down how you would feel if you were stuck in the crab trap. Thanks for that story on strategies to get out of the crab trap. Now we have a story about how to behave in the library from Aria, Chloe, and Gabriella. How to behave in the library. Being safe in the library is very important. Once you enter the library, you have to listen to directions from the teacher. Listen closely to directions when the teacher is talking. If you listen to the directions when you go to your computer or station, you will know what to do. To hear the directions, make sure you are quiet when you are getting directions from the teacher. 
Do not touch anything such as chairs while listening to the teacher. That is distracting. It is respectful to ask if you can use the materials before you start touching things. You won't want to break something if the teacher didn't show you how to use it. You should not fidget while the teacher is giving directions so you do not distract anybody else or miss a very important direction. Do not ask questions that are not emergencies and you can tell the teacher later. It is important to not interrupt while the teacher is talking. Do not touch anything unless the teacher allows you to touch it. Show Tiger pride and champs while sitting at the carpet and using toys the teacher allows you to use. Stay quiet because people might be reading and it might be dist it might distract them while they are reading their book and concentrating. Show respect to teachers, even students in the library. Conversation is a zero level while the teacher is talking and at a two or three when you are doing work in groups. You should keep your voices low in a speaking voice when you are working with others. You don't need to yell or talk loud when someone is talking, standing next to you. Use books correctly. When you leave the library, you should hold your book in front of you. You should use the books from the library appropriately. Make sure you keep the book in a safe place when you get get back to the classroom. You should also you should also remember to put your book in your backpack on the way home. You should never walk with a book in your hand on the bus to on the way to the bus. You might lose the book if you put it down or drop it on the ground outside if it was raining the book could be damaged. If a book falls down, then do not try to put it on a shelf because it will end up in the wrong spot which will cause a lot of trouble. The books are in order. order. Give it to Mrs. Yakovich. This is how, how you should, should behave whenever you are in the library. Thanks for that story about behaving in the library and using the materials correctly. That was Arya's last story with TNN. We're going to miss him very much and wish him well in his new country and school. Now let's hear about how to be safe in school with Kaylee, Gabriel, and Alice. Hello, Hello Sunnyside, Sunnyside Tigers! We are, we are all happy to be at Sunnyside School. That's why we all need to make sure we are we, that we are safe here at Sunnyside. The Sunnyside School Matrix explains a few things you can do to keep yourself safe. First, we will learn how to be safe in the classroom. Keep hands, feet, and objects to yourself. Raise your hand when you want to speak. To be safe in class, don't run because you might trip on a desk or a leg. Now, we will be talking about how to be safe in the hallway. When in the hallway, walk at an appropriate pace. Stay to the right and keep your hands and feet to yourself. To be safe in the bathroom, walk carefully, wash your hands with soap, and report any unsafe conditions to an adult. Be safe in the cafe. Be safe in the cafeteria by walking at all times, staying in your place in the lunch line, and eating your own food. Using playground equipment ap appropriately and keeping your hands to yourself are two ways to stay safe on the playground. Let's remember these rules so everyone can learn here at Sunnyside. For that story about beginning safe, safety in school. Now we are going to learn about one of the Shelton Public Schools milestones. <coughs> Students need to be able to type quickly and with accuracy. Let's hear about typing practice from Samantha Nicholas Yeshila typing practice. Side Tigers. Today we will talk to you about typing practice. You need to act the right way in typing and put your fingers on the right keys. When you put your fingers on the keyboard, you will probably feel two little lines that are on the letters J and F. 
And then you will know that your pointer finger goes on those letters because your fingers go on those letters straight away. Make sure you try not to look at your fingers. You want to make sure you're looking at the screen. If you, if you do look at the keys, it's okay because you, you could just try harder and soon you'll get the hang of it. Six facts about typing is keep your eyes on the, the screen you are typing on and keep your fingers curved and upright with your thumbs on the space bar. Sit up straight and keep feet flat on the floor. Fingers go on the home row keys and start your typing at a steady pace. Some great websites to type is Typing Practice on Mrs. Yakwich's Toolkit. Or you can use Dance Mat Typing, which is also on Mrs. Yakwich's Toolkit. Wow, great, now we can start typing. Enjoy your typing journey! Thanks for the story about typing practice. We are so lucky to have new students joining us at school. Let's hear about how it feels to be a new student in a new school and, we, and what we can do to make them feel welcome. Today we, today we are going to tell you about being a new student at Sunnyside Elementary. Being nice to a new student is important because you want to make them feel like they're at home. When I came to Sunnyside, I was so afraid to go to a new school. This is Kira. She is a new student at her school. Kira, how did you feel on your first day at Sunnyside Elementary? I, at felt, Sunnyside? I felt scared and I missed my old school. I thought no one would want to be my friend, but now I have many friends. Thanks for sharing with us. Let's hear from Natalia. Natalia, tell us more about your first day. When I went to my class, I made friends and then I had a great day. So it helps when people are friendly and make you feel welcome. We can also help new we can also help the new person by telling them about what tire prime means. We can tell them about the rules of the school. We can tell a new student about how we did the look for the good campaign and show the gratitude wall in the learning comments. If the new student has a question about the school, we can help them. Thanks, Natalia, Adrian, and Savannah. That was a great story. You might have seen the poster in the window of learning comments in the box in the hallway collecting items for the animal shelter. Joe, Earl, and Carly talked with the high school student who created this collection. Let's hear more from Hassan. Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking with a Shelton High School student. He has chosen a capstone project that will make a lot of, of local animals very happy. His name is Hassan. Welcome Hassan. Tell us a little about yourself. I've been here like for three years and I'm, I'm a junior right now and um, that's it. What's the capstone project? What's the capstone project? That's the yeah. question, right? What is it? Um, what is it? It's, 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 it's a project that you have to make in the school, like when you be in a junior, it's like um, what you have to do in your future. Uh, it's like a practice what, what you want to do, and you work kind thing like thing like that. Yeah. How long does the capstone project take? Uh, that's a good question. That's a long, that's long. So it's like a three, four months. You have to, yeah. That's kind of like our eventing convention. That's kind of like our eventing convention. What is your capstone project? What is your capstone project? My capstone project is uh, help to animals. Uh, we don't have the owners and that's it. I like to be, you know, I like to have pets, but I can't. That's why I'm doing this capsule.
What kinds of items shall we bring to help the animal shelter? Yeah, what kinds of items should we bring? Oh yeah, you can bring uh, any kind of food or toys, snacks, you know, things like that. Do you have any pets? Absolutely no, I can't. My, you know, my parents, my father, he's allergic to the pets, so oh. I can't have any. Hassan, thank you for taking the time to explain your capstone project. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You know, I, I'm sorry. You know, I like to have pets. And absolutely, in Guatemala, I get like uh, three dogs. That's why, uh, you know, I, it's a little bit affecting to me when I come to this country. So I didn't get any pets. I talked with my dad and he said he's allergic. I'm sorry for you, but you can have any kind of pet. This one. I'm saying, okay. Sunnyside, Sunnyside students will be happy to to help you with this great project. Look out for donation boxes in the front hallway. There was a notice sent home to each family explaining the project and possible don donations. Thank you so much. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, you too. Let's remember to add the boxes. The collection will be ending on February 26th. If you have anything to add, make sure you bring it in soon. Well, that is all we have for TNN4. We hope you enjoyed the stories we shared with you today. Do your best, and as always, Oh, you're a tiger,